Good Thursday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's go outside and take a quick look outside that weather window. And what a beautiful afternoon today all across north central Washington. This view, once again, the beautiful view we show you from Wenatchee Heights. That's our cross camera, SkyFi Tower Cam. And just a few clouds rolled in this afternoon. It was clear this morning. Temperatures were nice. The wind was a lot wet less today. And it was just a nice early fall day. But guess what's returning tomorrow? That's right, gusty winds back in our forecast for Friday. We also have about a 30% chance of rain late in the day. But the big news tomorrow will be that wind. Not so bad here in the Wenatchee Valley, but I can't say the same for you folks in the Waterville Plateau and the Columbia Basin areas where I think you can see winds about 25 to 40 miles an hour. And we will talk much more about that and your weekend forecast coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. The state bomb squad was called in after a communications network crew found blasting caps on property owned by KB Winery near the Gorge Amphitheater. An accused drug trafficker and ringleader of an identity theft scheme here in the Wenatchee Valley will have his trial in December. And the Washington State Supreme Court today struck down as unconstitutional a voter-approved initiative that would have made car tabs a flat $30. But first, we begin tonight. A Wenatchee man is charged with first-degree theft and other charges for allegedly embezzling some $10,000 from Bob's Burgers and Brew in East Wenatchee. Police say 42-year-old Ricardo Vera was a manager in charge of the restaurant's nightly deposits and he had access to its credit card and checking accounts as well as the tips left for servers and staff. About $10,000 in deposits allegedly went missing while Vera was in charge of the procedure in 2018 and prosecutors say he misused the restaurant's credit to make purchases for himself leading to four charges of identity theft. Vera was due to make his first appearance in court today in Douglas County Superior Court. Well, the state bomb squad was called in after a communications network crew found blasting caps on property owned by KB Winery near the Gorge Amphitheater. Blasting caps are small explosive devices usually used to detonate larger explosives. The state patrol said three blasting caps were found about 4 p.m. in an area where the crew had been digging. The area was evacuated while investigators ensured no more of the explosives were present. Meanwhile, an accused drug trafficker and ringleader of an identity theft scheme here in the Wenatchee Valley will have his trial in December. 52-year-old Bruno Paul Ruggerberg faces 15 felony charges, including methamphetamine distribution, heroin, and fentanyl possession, also five counts of illicitly possessing firearms. Rugberg allegedly sold several ounces of meth to a police informant last May, and investigators say a search of hotel rooms he was using turned up multiple phony ID cards and equipment used to manufacture them. He and three other defendants allegedly charged more than $12,000 in fraudulent credit and purchases. Rugberg has prior convictions, including drug possession and first-degree kidnapping. His trial is set to begin on December 12th. The Washington State Supreme Court today struck down as unconstitutional a voter-approved initiative that would have made car tabs a flat $30. The court agreed unanimously that the initiative approved last November improperly addressed more than one subject. In addition, the justices said the actual ballot title on Initiative 976 was misleading. I-976 was another of many ballot measures put forward by anti-tax advocate Tim Iman. Well, coming up next, the Chelan Douglas Health District says 4,500 COVID-19 tests have been administered since October 9th. And there have been 77 positive test results. The Wenatchee School District enrollment drops by an estimated 300 students year over year. And a dusting of snow this week at Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort above Wenatchee is a reminder that ski season is rapidly approaching. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Pibus Public Markets motto is where community meets. 
whether it's people you know enjoying an event or they meet a colleague for coffee and whip out their laptop and are able to actually do work here having quick and reliable wi-fi is one of the things that makes Piva such a great community hub. It just contributes to the welcoming place that we want Pybus to be. I'm Allie and fiber keeps people connected and that's what Pybus Market is all about. So Pam, how's your mom doing? She's okay. She's struggling. She'd like to stay in her house and it's getting harder for her to do the daily chores. What kinds of problems is she having? Just basic house cleaning, you know, uh, taking care of her house, yard work, taking care of her medicine. Mm -hmm. It does sound exhausting. It is very exhausting and I always worry about her. Aging and adult care can assist you or your loved one to remain comfortably and safely in their own home. Contact them today to start the conversation. Welcome back. In another news, the Chelan Douglas Health District says its community by community COVID-19 testing since August has produced only about a 1% positive rate. The district began voluntary drive-through tests in Bridgeport and expanded to other North Central Washington communities every week, administering more than 4,500 tests and finding just 77 new cases of coronavirus. The testing also helped discover and control small clusters of disease, including an outbreak that infected more than 20 people at one agricultural workplace near Leavenworth. While the community test findings are small, the overall rate of new cases in Chelan and Douglas counties is still about 135 per 100,000 people in the population. More community test sites are expected to open in the coming weeks. Well, with the start of some in-person classes right around the corner, the Wenatchee School District says it's hemorrhaging students. On Wednesday, staff, staff members told the Wenatchee School Board they can expect to see about 300 fewer kids this year than last, and they believe disruption from the COVID-19 pandemic is to blame. So K-12 enrollment with the alternative learning programs is down uh, roughly 300 full-time equivalents um, in students from the budget. And uh, that is down about 280 FTE from March count, which was again, that last count before COVID. Um, so our enrollment is down from budget um, it is something that we are monitoring and it is something um, that we are actively pursuing, um, making sure that we're being fiscally responsible, which is something I'll go through in the next slides. Um, but just on a high level, the largest impacts when, you, when we're comparing it to the budget, uh, en enrollment for kindergarten is down about 110 and um, 11th grade is down about 60 from the budget ninth and 10th grades are down about 70 total from the budget. So 70 between the two grades and then running start is up about 80 from budget. Um, so some of those uh, are some of those 11th graders um, probably either transitioned to WIA or went to that running start program. Um, so really ultimately um, we are seeing a lot of families decided not to enroll their students in kindergarten. And so that is definitely a big impact. Um, so we'll, you know, kind of see how that plays out, I guess, throughout the rest of this year and then definitely transitioning into next year. So state apportionment, uh, just based on the actual enrollment at this point, we will see roughly a two to three million or two, two, three <laughs> um, million dollar decrease uh, in funding. And so it's, you know, approximately $2.5 million um, roughly that we will see in a decrease uh, in state funding. And so that's definitely something we have our eye on. It's something that we're monitoring. Uh, like I said, enrollment is counted every month and then it is averaged. So we're still 
you know, every month is a new month, every month is a new number. Uh, so we're definitely monitoring that and the board will be able to see it uh, monthly as well on the reports. A dusting of snow this week at Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort above Wenatchee is a reminder that ski season is rapidly approaching. The resort is expected to be fully operational this season, aiming to start the day after Thanksgiving. But Mission Ridge says this year will be unlike any other with protocols in place to protect employees and guests from COVID-19. The resort spent a lot of the summer and early fall working on its new number two chairlift, which is expected to be completed before Christmas. A video from last week's show uh, last week shows the first towers for the new lift going up. Set first tower. Watching the NCW Life Evening News coming up next tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Hope, oxygen to your soul, color in your world, a light to your future. Difficult to qualify and quantify, yet you know when it's lacking. So many things have promised us hope but have left us feeling hopeless and empty. Real hope is able to stand firm, even on the darkest day of the soul, and still say with the prophet Jeremiah, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. The apostle Paul declared to a young church in Rome, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. If our God is a God of hope, then maybe it's your turn to experience a hope that cannot be shaken or destroyed. And maybe it's time to hope again. Maybe it's time to become a generation of hope. What if the same God that raised Christ Jesus from the dead can resurrect your hope? Maybe it's time to hope again. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Well, time now for our weekly, we used to call it Kennel, Kennel Cameos, and now we're calling it Pause for Pets feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Tonight, NCW Life's Megan McPherson introduces us to Henry the dog. NCW Life Channel. We're here with Jenny, the volunteer coordinator at the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, and Henry is joining us this week. Can you tell us about Henry? Yes, Henry's about 11 years old, and he could really use a soft place to land. He's been staying this last week with um, one of our staff. Um, she has three medium dogs. She said he is the perfect companion. He is so wonderful, so loving. He's a little rough around the edges looking, but the sweetest dog. Um, he loves to go on walks. He's perfect in the car. He would just make an excellent, excellent companion. Um, he does have one drawback, and that's he can't be around cats or small, small dogs. But, but it's kind of breaking our hearts to see Henry here at the shelter. So he is actually entering foster care, so he can sleep in a bed mm -hmm. until his forever home comes, um, which we hope is really soon. 
um, his cone is because he just recently had surgery on his ear, um, but he's not letting that stop him either. Yeah. He's just a joyful, awesome, awesome dog. And what should someone do if they want to adopt him? Um, they should go ahead and call the shelter here and set up a meet and greet and come meet Henry. He is ready to go home to his forever home today. Thank you. The Wenatchee Valley Humane Society is located at 1474 South Wenatchee Avenue and is open Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m to 3 p.m. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchehumane.org. Thank you very much, Megan. Now time to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Before we do that, outside we go as we take a look outside our weather window from this afternoon. And man, what a day. A beautiful early fall day here in the Wenatchee Valley. Just a few clouds above the Cascades that kept our temperatures down just a little bit. But today, the nice part, wasn't it? No wind as we look down from our SkyFi Tower camera on Wenatchee Heights at the beautiful Wenatchee Valley. Limited information in our almanac today. The Weather Service site was down, so I only have a few figures for you. Unofficially, 60 degrees our high temperature today. We started off very chilly at 40 degrees, which is a couple of degrees below where we should be. So is our high temperature. No new precipitation, and we still stand year to date, January 1st to now, at 3.89 inches. Let's take a peek at how you're Friday shapes up. We're almost to the weekend, the end of the week, and it's going to be kind of a rough one tomorrow in a couple of different ways. We'll get to that, those details in a second, but first temperature wise tomorrow, 70. Can you believe that in Moses Lake? Upper 60s in Quincy and Afreda, about 67 for us in Wenatchee, 64 in Leavenworth, and 66 degrees tomorrow in Chelan. As we look at our surface loop now, we'll see a lot more why we're going to see that instability tomorrow, but not tonight. High pressure still in control of our weather. We could see some clouds moving in. That's from this area of low pressure that is sliding across British Columbia. And look at the snow associated with that. By the time we get into tomorrow, yeah, it's going to be windy as that storm system barrels by. You can see it right here by tomorrow. But here's our windiest areas right here in north central Washington. Most of the rain will stay in western Washington, although I still think we have a pretty good chance to see some at least showers in the afternoon tomorrow, about a 30% chance of that. For Saturday, we'll start off partly cloudy increasing clouds during the day and once again a 30% chance of more p.m. showers as our next storm system moves down from B.C. But by Sunday, just partly cloudy skies and when we say seasonal temperatures now, keep in mind that by then that's going to be about 59 or 60 degrees and that's pretty much what will be on Sunday too with partly cloudy skies and seasonal temperatures. Monday, a cold shot of air will come down from northwest and that'll cool us down just a little bit on Monday. Partly cloudy, but look at this polar vortex vortex as it begins to sink south. We're just not sure yet how far west that will go, but for now we'll just say mostly sunny on Tuesday. Temperatures seasonal while Billings, Montana, high temperature 27 degrees. Let's take a look now at your Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling seven day forecast. Tonight will drop down to a little bit better, 44 degrees, 67 showers with plenty of wind on Friday. Still a 30% chance for rain on Saturday and 62. And then things dry out and cool down. By the time we get to Monday through Wednesday, we're we'll looking at partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies with high temperatures only in the mid to upper 50s. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Grandstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Hi, Stephen DeVilvis here, branch manager of Beneficial and Home Care. We are an equal opportunity employer and we do not discriminate in employment or services. It is our mission to maximize our clients' physical health and sense of mental well-being while remaining in the comfort of their home. We are currently seeking professional caregivers who share our mission to help our clients live safely and comfortably at home. Call Beneficial and Home Care. Schedule your interview today, 509-663-7900. Traditional values and innovation in honoring the life of each family we serve is part of the ministry of Heritage Memorial Chapel. Our staff is committed to walk with your family with compassion through this time of grief. We are here to help and here to serve the right kind of help when you need it most. Heritage Memorial Chapel.
Here's to five billion miles of amazing. Five billion miles of... This is so cool. Five billion miles of helping you stay safe. Five billion miles of passing the pump. Five billion miles of... Woo! <laughs> That's five billion miles driven around the world. The all-electric 2020 Nissan LEAF. The extended range 2020 LEAF is now available at Town Nissan, right behind Costco in East Wenatchee. CW Life Channel, in conjunction with Skeeter Buggins Productions, is proud to present the Wenatchee Valley Symphony Orchestra's first concert of the season, this Friday at 7 o'clock. Enjoy the four seasons of Buenos Aires by Piazzolla and La Quattro Stagioni by Vivaldi, conducted by Nicholas Cuoli. Violin soloist is Brittany Breeden. Join us for this special musical event Friday at 7 o'clock on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Thursday to you. Major League Baseball's been around a long time, 151 years to be exact. And in all that time, no team has ever accomplished what the Dodgers did in the first inning of Game 3 of the National League Championship Series last night. Los Angeles scored a playoff record 11 runs in the first inning en route to a 15-3 route of Atlanta. The Dodgers brought 14 men to the plate while the Braves went through two pitchers. Oh, and by the way, L.A. scored 10 of those runs with two outs. The onslaught was highlighted by Max Muncy's Grand Slam home run. It was one of five homers hit to the game by the Dodgers as Jock Peterson went four for six with three RBIs and Corey Seager finished three for four with three runs and three ribbies. Atlanta still up two games to one in the best of seven series. Game four tonight on Fox as Clayton Kershaw goes up against Bryce Wilson. Well, Houston staved off elimination with a 4-3 win over Tampa Bay in the American League Championship Series. Jose Altuve opened the scoring for the Astros with a solo home run in the first, his third of the series. He followed it up with an RBI double in the third. Now Tampa Bay tied it in the fourth on a two-run home run by Randy Arozarena. George Springer untied it in the fifth on his first homer of the series, and Houston held on for the victory. Zach Greinke earned the win, going six innings, allowing two runs on five hits with seven strikeouts and a walk. Houston goes with rookie right-hander Luis Garcia today against Tampa Bay's John Curtis, who's getting his first postseason start. You can watch that on TBS. Well, it's been a while since we had postseason season honors coming a Mariner way, but then again, we've never had Kyle Lewis before. Seattle center fielder was selected the American League Rookie of the Year by the Sporting News. Lewis led the Mariners with 50 or with hits in 54, homers 11, walks 34, on base percentage at 364, and total bases with 90. Kyle was named on 55 of the 92 ballots of the American League players. Lewis is the first Mariners player to win the, a rookie sport, uh, Sporting News Rookie Award since Rafael Soriano did it back in 2003 when well, the magazine gave out the award for both rookie pitcher and position player in each league. Well, the Seahawks created a new award last year to honor the former players for their work off the field in retirement. The first recipient was Jacob Green. He had the honor of announcing Cliff Averill as the second recipient of the Legend of the Year Award. Dear Cliff, it's been a while since I put on the pads or been in that locker room. Walking off the field the last time, you never forget it. But it becomes the first step into new passions and opportunities. It was off the field that I found I had the greatest impact, and I know you found that too. That's what being a Seahawk legend means. It goes way beyond what we did between those lines. It's about continuing the sacrifice and the commitment to our brotherhood and all our communities. I'm proud of everything you've done for people, locally and worldwide. You are the epitome of what it means to be a Seahawk legend. As last year's legend of the year, it only feels right that I'm the one to tell you, you are the 2020 Seahawks legend of the year. Keep using your platform for good. Your impact knows no bounds. Proud of you and everything you'll continue to accomplish. Go Hawks, Jacob.
The Seahawks donated $5,000 to a charity of Averill's Choice with a matching $5,000 from American Family Insurance. The money will go to the Cliff Averill Foundation, founded in 2014 to help educate youths about healthy living. Averill says he was inspired after the loss of his grandmother and his mother's diagnosis with diabetes. Well, it's Thursday, so that means it's hockey night on the NCW Life Channel. Tonight's game features the Wenatchee Wild and Penticton V's from a game last November 9th at the Town Toyota Center. Our checker had the play-by-play. -play. Slid around behind one, the Penticton net by Wenatchee, and the V's will pick it up. Here's Niedermeyer with the centering feed. Back across, in front shot and a score. The first shot on goal finds the back of the net. No penalty play will continue. O'Brien on the near wall with it. Sends it down low side of the net. Crossing feed shot and a score. Wide open on the far side was Danny Waite. Gets a little help getting it back to Gallagher at the point and then to Young. Young dances down low side in front. Backhander, save made, loose puck score. Nick Caffarelli ended up with it. And that crossing feed gets picked off by Bayless. Bayless over on the right side, Wolders to Emerson, shot save, rebound, score! Quinn Emerson got his own rebound. Dances out through center, pass ahead is for Niedermeyer. He tries to get in around Grabel, he does, he shoots, and he scores. Boy, nice move by Niedermeyer. He's at the midpoint, sends it over for Young, down low side of the net, in front to Adams, and he scores! Brian Adams with the one-timer. Be sure to watch the entire game tonight here at 7 o'clock on your television home for the Wenatchee Wild NCW Life Channel. Here's a reminder what's still to come on the NCW Life Channel. Wenatchee Valley Symphony Orchestra's first performance of the season will air tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. In fact, tune in tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley when conductor Nicholas Caoli will uh, join Dan Kuntz. Then at 9 o'clock tomorrow night, it's the re-airing of our hour-long documentary on Saving Rayana. We'll be back to sports on Saturday. Wenatchee Moses Lake Volleyball at 2 o'clock followed by racing action from July at Wenatchee Valley Super Oval. That gets underway at 6. That's a look at sports news. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Uh, thank you very much, Eric. As we leave you tonight, check out this dramatic surveillance video at Ancient Lakes Elementary in Quincy. It shows just how quickly and powerfully that microburst we told you about of wind hit the school's gym at about 4.30 Tuesday afternoon. The Quincy School District has secured the gym repairs that will begin on the roof, which was part of a remodel in the 1990s. Nobody, luckily, was injured in that incident. Now let's check in with Dan Kuntz for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thank you very much, Grant. As you know by now, tomorrow at 7 o'clock, in conjunction with Skeeter Bugger Productions, we'll be televising the very first concert of the season for the Wenatchee Valley Symphony Orchestra. And my guest on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley tomorrow will be the conductor and the musical director, my good friend Nicholas Cololi, who not only plays a pretty mean piano, he's got a pretty good golf game, too. Nick will be my guest tomorrow via Skype on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. We'll have your weekend weather forecast and everything you need to start your weekend live at local 7 a.m. tomorrow for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Dan, and that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us. And have a great night. With TV advertising, what we want to do is more deeply connect with the community. People spot me in different parts around North Central, you know, Costco and Wenatchee say, hey, you're the pizza guy. And so they wouldn't know that if it weren't for the, for the TV commercials we've done. We've been here so long that people already know who we are and what we do, but to have that image flash on their television screen as opposed to just hearing in the radio or seeing in the newspaper. I just love the fact that we can actually put our finger on 
when a customer comes in and says, I saw your ad. It's becoming increasingly difficult in this digital age to know where are your customers listening or watching, because I watch all the different channels that they watch too, like Cooking Channel, History Channel, and so it was wonderful to be able to be on there. I would say that uh, if you want to do business in Wenatchee, then you should connect with the people of Wenatchee, and there's no better way to do that than with NCW Life.